August 8, 2017, the meeting of the Greenwood CST Board of Directors is called to order. Uh, we had a closed session for the last half hour to discuss a matter of pending litigation, and we uh, have directed our manager to uh, proceed with the normal process when there are issues like this. Now, are there any comments on the agenda? We do the very least. Oh, sorry. Thank you. This is my first time doing this. <laughs> Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the liberty of the strong. Now, continuing, does anyone on the board or in the public have any uh, issues relative to the agenda for this evening? Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Second. Second. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next, the consent calendar, which includes the draft minutes of our meeting of July 11th and the paid bills. Are there any comments from the directors on that? I have no comments on the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Minutes. Are you talking about A or B? We're talking about A and B. Okay, I do have a comment on B, but I'm just waiting for A. Anybody has anything yeah, I, it, it, it appears the board has no comments on either A or B. So I do. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. yes. Um, the mirror, the mirror bonds. Um, looks like we had about thirty-seven thousand dollars worth of payments. Two for bonds, one for operating. Um, just out of curiosity, the two thousand and seven, I think it was bond. When did that run its course? It's uh, it was ninety-seven, right? Mirror bond. Uh huh. Is it a ten-year bond? Uh, two thousand twenty-two. Oh, okay. So you're going to be have be in Gen two and still pay for Gen one for about a four-year old bond. You're talking about the 1995? Right. 1995. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, cheap would know that I have it at this point, but I, I have the, the schedule of it. I can get that up. Okay. Yeah. And operating is, is this an annual charge? Yes. Okay. All right. Is this to replace equipment or just a charge for this? This is just for the bond. Mm -hmm. Oh, for the bond. No, the operating is the operating. operating is operating, then there's a bond cost, and then there's a second, uh, third payment in there. That is for some upgrades to the system about halfway through, and that's that's, that's the 1995. That's the 1995 one. Okay, all right. Okay, um, I note that um, 1237 we paid the uh, CalPERS again lump sum, which saved the district approximately ten thousand dollars. Correct. That's good. Um, also, that we made our first contribution to the OPEP um, fund and the. Payments are the usual first of the fiscal year gigantic leap due to the fact that we did that CalPERS lump sum and also SDRMA, which is the right the beginning of the year. Correct, and Mira, and uh, we had, uh, July is a heavy month. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all I had on expenses. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else? Yeah. Uh, Linda, you had something? Um, no, I was kind of curious. Well, first I wanted to ask about claim number 1254, camp transportation for 11,671 bucks. I just wondered what that was. Field trips for summer camps. I'm sorry? Field trips. Oh, field trips. so in other words, the buses are charged out separately and they're not included in the amount of money it costs for the field trips, such as admission and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's separated out. There's, there's so camp piece. transportation is buses. Correct. Okay, good. Is that okay. for the whole summer? Or? No, that's half, I believe. And it, how many field trips is that? Six field trips and an overnight, I believe. And then I do have um, one, two, three, four, five. There's six claims that seem kind of funky to me and they're all kind of similar. 
and and I'm sorry, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly because I don't know who this person is. Dave Gorette. Then there's Shane. Then there's Luke. And then there's Robin. And then Shane again. And then Dave Gorette again. And there's $300, $300, $528, $446, $300, and $300 for COMM events. What are COMM events in? What's the $300? It just seems kind of a round number, like somebody's slipping it in somebody's pocket? Oh, please. <laughs> I'm making a joke. You don't joke about that. Happy like birthday, that. sweetheart. Shh. You don't make jokes. So like I'm that. just kind of wondering what that is. I believe that 300 was a band or a community event, a band for the music. A band? A music band for the community of but Prom events is community events. Why would Dave and Shane and Luke get paid for that? They're, they're all different. They're all different things. A few of our bands, we we pay them in cash, and a few of the the other things are petty cash reimbursements. I'm assuming for Luke. But I thought we weren't having petty cash stuff like this. We we ninety five percent of our of our transactions are credit card. When you're running, you know million dollars worth of activity with the summer camp. Some stuff is petty cash reimbursements, which is inevitable. Okay, well. Which we turn in the receipt for. So like if we have an expenditure, like let's say we have to go send somebody to buy ice cream or something, when like Robin has to go buy ice cream. And yeah, I, get, I can certainly so understand. So everything has, there's a receipt attached to everything that we turn in. But I, I can understand that, but why 300, 300, 300, 300? I mean, it just sounds so weird. Yeah, it's. I'd have to look, but it's it's possibly banned. That's the most petty cash. Banned. We also like for our October for our brew fest, we had to buy a couple of things, so there's deposits. I'd have to look. And couldn't we have that made a little more clear in here? I mean, like I said, we have a Carolyn approved or goes through and double checks everything. We turn the receipts, tag it with the budget line. So, I mean, it's in detail. I don't know how it's reported out to you. Okay, guys, so it's sort of like a bucket that is spread out over the uh, Park and Rec Commission. Or, I'm sorry, the Park and Rec Department, just to cover band costs. Or we have petty cash for miscellaneous miscellaneous okay. expenses that we don't use okay. the cal card for. Thank you. Any other comments on the consent calendar, Stephen? So uh, this is actually uh, a general question. I want to understand this report. You have uh, Eric who wants you to explain this. You have total claim down on the left and then amount on the right. And sometimes they're the same amounts and sometimes they're different amounts. What does that mean? Well, they're always the same amount. They're just sometimes mm -hmm. broken down between departments. So if you add up everything that falls under that total claim, it'll equal the claim on the left. Okay, so for Marinwood CSD total claim one hundred eighty seven thousand. Then it's whatever. What number are you looking at? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I got my white glasses. Twenty two six nine. Twenty yeah twenty yeah twelve sixty nine. Correct. So that's just everything added that falls under that category. Correct, and this is how it breaks down between departments and the specific account numbers. All right. So there was. Um, for pool supplies, and I noticed it was Capital One. I don't know if it's Capital One credit card or if that's the name of your pool company, but are we putting stuff on credit cards? And, and I, I, I just. Capital One is our Costco card. We have a Costco credit card. It's a, so it's a credit card Correct. payment that you're making? Correct. Okay. Um, all right. So. Yeah, I, I do think, you know, I, I made a comment last month that uh, some of this information is very clear, but the stuff that's not so clear is uh, on the revenue side, and um, I know it gets reported in budgets, but it doesn't seem to get broken down. I'm particularly curious how much we made uh, at the uh, the beer event, but we can talk about that later. But anyhow, um, that's it for right now. Anything else?
anything else from the public? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Is there a second? Here. Well, then I'll second you. You can. I can? You can, you, yeah, you, you can vote. But I should have been. Oh, I can? Yeah, you can. You're basically just saying that you're confirming with the board that uh, according to them, this is correct. Just because you were absent at a meeting, you can still vote for approval minutes. Great. Right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carries unanimously. Public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. Linda, you raised your hand first. First, I am? Okay, thank yes. you. Um, I didn't attend the last board meeting, but I did read the minutes and I watched the video. I'm very concerned about Mr. Naylor's comments at the last board meeting in regards to the private closed session negotiations with the Marinewood Fire Department Fire, Fire, uh, Fire's Union representatives. In the July 11th minutes, <clears throat> it states that Mr. Naylor said, over the course of recent discussions with the employee group, they have displayed blind, uncommunicative, uncommunicative and poor leadership. So, Mr. Naylor expressed this openly at the last board meeting, and he basically described the behavior of the firefighters and the union negotiators during a closed, confidential meeting. I am absolutely no longer confident that Mr. Naylor can be a valid member of the district negotiation team, and I think he should be removed or replaced he obviously has a negative bias against those he is negotiating with and should not be mentioning their behavior. Um, it's, it's private. He should not be mentioning their behavior. It's private. Thank you. Thank and I don't need any response. Thank you. Other than the fact that you're completely wrong? No problem. No problem. I don't serve on the negotiating committee. You don't know what you're talking about. Thank you. Thanks for your I appreciate it, Mr. Naylor. Thank, Thank you. you. Stephen. Um, so uh, I just want to make an announcement uh, that uh, uh, community member, uh, uh, longstanding community member, uh, Ray Day passed away last week. Um, and. Uh, uh, after a bout of can cancer, um, he uh, was very instrumental in helping uh, resolve or begin to resolve the, the toxic waste issue down at uh, uh, Marinwood Plaza. Um, good man, used to walk his dogs everywhere. Damon Connolly recognized him today, and I simply uh, Hope that you guys recognize his service as well. He served. Uh, he got two Purple Hearts in Vietnam, and he was uh, not only was he a nice guy, he actually was a legitimate war hero. So good to know. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know him, but if one of you or Eric will remind me towards the end of the meeting, possibly we could uh, uh, adjourn in his memory. Uh, anyway, a little bit from the community, and he's been involved at times with the CSD board on some issues. And again, he was a legitimate hero of serving Vietnam. He was just, he had his opinions, but uh, he, he was a good man. He was a, definitely lost in the community. Thank you. Anything else from the public? Thanks. Yeah. District matters. The fiscal year preliminary profit and loss budget to actual financials. Yeah, so these are obviously pre-audit, uh, but we've you know, gone through them pretty good, uh, which is why I, I do refer to them as preliminary, and this was, will be ultimately what I'll submit to the auditor, and he'll start pulling from this. Um, I kind of left you some of the key notes uh, in my memo, uh, including some kind of the primary items of note. I want to lead in saying this is, again, nothing more than a one-year operating snapshot that for the fiscal year. This is does not take into account long-term uh, liabilities, long-term needs, uh, long-term contingencies. 
This just says last fiscal year we brought in X amount of revenue, we expended Y amount in expenditures um, from the operating budget solely. So services, supplies, uh, as well as you know taxes and everything else on the other side. Um, with that said, we did do pretty good. Revenue did exceed our budgeted expectations by approximately two hundred sixty-five thousand uh, dollars. A lot is obviously uh, due taxes. We came in about ninety-five thousand dollars ahead of what we had budgeted and anticipated uh, for the year. Uh, recreation <coughs> programs exceeded budget by approximately ninety-two thousand, and pool operations exceeded budget by approximately twenty-six thousand. Um, not to mention expenditures were approximately 26,000 lower than what we had budgeted for. Um, again, this is moving in the right direction. This is the kind of gaps we should be seeing on an annual basis so that the district can address these much longer term needs and unfunded uh, liabilities of such. But it is not, uh, it shouldn't be seen as we are rolling in it because that is not the case. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out with streetlight revenue specifically, uh, that money is designated towards streetlights. We actually came in with a slight surplus over what we received for that special assessment versus what we spent on streetlights of uh, almost $2,400. Uh, one of the things I'll be doing is building a contingency account into the balance sheet, which we can use to run that. We completely depleted it last fiscal year um, with some fairly decent costly repairs to street lights. Uh, this year we can start to move back into having a slight surplus to fall back on should we have another costly repair. As you can see, the money we bring in barely covers the amount it costs to power the street lights and for routine maintenance. So that'll be happening. Um, otherwise, I did put some notes at the end. You, uh, I'm sure, have reviewed them, so I will leave it at that. And ask if you have uh, any questions. Any questions? I just have a couple. Um, this is the year that GASB 75 showed up and we have to start moving some of these long-term liabilities onto a balance sheet, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so that as part of this audit, we will actually be getting a balance sheet. Uh, yeah, in the same way of how they do it and put them into their mm -hmm. audit, it will show that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a question on whether or not we actually have to perform an actuarial study this year or whether or not we can have our actuary uh, basically project out for the year based on what they did in 2015 and then in 2018 we would start the two year cycles. I see. Okay. But the, the, we will have the data. It won't change the data much. It'll just matter whether we spend a couple thousand or several thousand to have it done. Mm -hmm. Understood. But uh, you know, again, this moves these long-term liabilities out of the footnotes where nobody notices and puts them on a financial statement. That is so correct. Mm -hmm. It reflects. Absolutely. Very clearly. The 344000 that was booked to park for some reason and doesn't get allocated, is that going to, you know, remind me what that is and does it get allocated um, as part of the year and closing process? The 344. Yeah, it's a 4120610. Is it, I, I thought I remember you saying this is something that, that is happens. actually a special assessment. It is a special that assessment. Is, that is a special tax specific to park. Oh, it is. Yes. Okay. So I that thought, can only be spent on. Okay. okay. Was there another large account that was posted I, to the park department? Yes. All basically all of the taxes. So what I did with the taxes when we ran the budget <coughs> was I brought everybody up to even took rec and took fire and brought them a nominal amount above even just to give a little bit of a buffer zone and everything else stayed in park. That is why when you look at it from a budget perspective for park, they had a uh, 883,000, you know, they they had a $241,000 net gain loss budget. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But again, that's simply cash just because it dropped into park is just because that's how we keep our accounting. It kind of took over from SAP because everything had to be claimed to a uh, uh, to a department. It doesn't mean it is allocated to park at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. It sits in our general fund. Okay. Anything else? Any comments? I, I just went through kind of in a gross sort of way and looked at where we had major 
increases over budget or expenditures and where we had decreases in revenue. Uh, and I, I, in the park department, I just wondered, for instance, copy, copier lease and printing, 154% uh, over budget. It isn't a lot of money, but uh, is this something that's a one-shot deal, or, or we have a new lease on our equipment? No, it's the same. It just was a matter of us really looking at how it was being allocated, and then it was addressed in the 17-18 budget. Okay, and I'm assuming that pool maintenance, hydrant maintenance, is the same kind of thing, because I know that was divided or taken apart. Yes, it was. The, uh, uh, give me a number, or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 5220215. Uh, 5220215. Two, two, pool maintenance, hydrant maintenance. Uh, which is actually as far as uh, this is concerned for park is small tools. Okay. And in this for current, that, for that in the current year's budget, it's properly it's it is separated. It's yes, clean. it is. It is clean. I didn't want to change the way it was adopted. So, but when you look at all reports coming forward for seventeen eighteen, you won't see these slash marks uh, and asterisks and everything else. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time cleaning that up, and that was what was improved. But I didn't want to make that change in this yet because it would make this confusing. Okay. In recreation, the only under budget for revenue item was for uh, adult rec programs. Are they lessening some, or how have we related that to this year? We we've had a couple of classes. One of our well, we have a, a few classes that weren't happening. In one, in one case, the instructor is sick, has been sick, and probably is going to be coming back. Um, and then we also had like a, a language class that just didn't end up happening because of enrollment. Okay. Under rec expenditures, a really biggie, uh, uniforms and apparel went way over. It's still not a lot of money, but a large percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, was that a, a one-time deal, or is uh, that was actually tied entirely, uh, for the most part, to the pool? So with the pool, it was just a lot of updating of uh, things. We had a lot of older staff who didn't come back this year; it had to be replaced with other staff. So we provide them with uh, coats and and uh, their lifeguard suits and things along those lines. And uh, they have a lot of pool staff. Okay. Under fire, what's what's the emergency response speed? We budgeted some money and didn't get anything. So there's two things we budgeted for. One is emergency response fees, and the other one is um, paramedic reimbursement. And I've been working with uh, someone in the San Rafael admin office because the, the CSD passed an ordinance a few years ago where we can do third-party billing for um, our PLS engine company responses to our own residents. We haven't started doing it. I'm in the process of getting a Medi-Cal number, which is a lengthy and extended process in itself. If we get that Medi-Cal number, San Rafael can start adding third-party billing to our residents, collect the fee, and then give it back to us quarterly. And $11,000 is kind of an optimistic. I think it's probably going to be somewhere between five and 8000 but um, it's revenue that's out there that we're leaving on the table that I'd like to try and get for us. For 17, 18, we didn't budget any revenue for that. And the other one, oh yes, or excuse me, paramedic reimbursements is if we work out the paramedic um, positions with the labor group, Sarafel will reimburse our district for those increased costs. That's where the funding will be shown. I have, uh, from the public, we're going to go with Ron first this time. He was the best. Yeah, under fire department, uh, long-term debt, uh, principal and interest. Uh, that's not the uh, lease on the new engine, is it? No, that's strictly the uh, building loan. Remodel? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, happily, you've come in under budget, but it, aren't those payments fixed? Why well, would we be off on estimating? I can tell you exactly why. Why. So, yes, they're <clears> fixed. <throat> However, we were required to establish a reserve account when the loan was taken out 20 years ago. When the reserve account garners interest, they apply interest to the principal and to the and to the interest payment. So that is why it came in under because our reserve account made money. They used the money that it made to, towards the thing and then build us for the rest. That's very uncommon among government agencies. 
I, I applaud you for doing it. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I wish I could take credit for it, uh, Ron. Uh, it was actually a phone call that I made when I got the bill that said, hey, how come this is a few thousand dollars less than what I expected to be? Yeah. Um, and then to Chief's point, we have enough in that reserve account. This is actually the last year, so it's not a budgeted item for 1718. And I've already communicated with the bank, and they will be taking directly from the reserve account to pay off the remaining principal as well as uh, the final interest payment. And any excess in the reserve account will come back to the district. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's 2017 18. It's ours. Wow. Yeah, it's off the budget. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Oh, all I wanted to do was thank the chief for looking into that um, paramedic reimbursement thingy because the di obviously the district needs every thousand bucks it can get. So if we can start getting uh, reimbursement back from San Rafael through Medi-Cal, whatever, it's great. Anything we can get back, it's great. Thank you. Stephen. Um, you know what, I, I think I'm going to... Uh, Simply make the comment that I appreciate having this. This is this is kind of new, getting this information, but it's still not granular enough to really understand what's what's going on. So um, I guess I guess I'd like to understand money in, money out a little bit better than I do right now. So anyhow, that's just a general comment. I have not. Thank you. you know, when I received this board package, the first thought that came to my mind is, that's what Stephen was asking for, was something like this, yeah. almost. Well, so I know. Work, work is closed. It's more than we had before, maybe. Good boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, can I actually stay? I put these out quarterly. Okay. I have been putting these out quarterly uh, ever since we started using QuickBooks. They've come out every quarter. They'll come out every quarter. So in November, we will review Q1 for 17-18 in the same way that last November we reviewed Q1 for 16-17. So these do come out every quarter. To do them more than quarterly seems uh, a little much given our resources. And even though I know the first quarter ends in September, for me to turn them around in less than a week to get them published for the first October board meeting, um, just isn't going to happen. Based on my time on the board, this is the first time I've seen one. I there think. you go. I, I just one uh, further comment. So we really we're we're paying bills here, but we're also operating a business um, in terms of revenue. And what I'm saying is, we don't understand. The public doesn't understand. You know what what the, what's going on with the business? What's profitable? What's costing us money? I mean, we get the the end of the year budgets or quarterly budgets, and you you see a number, but it really doesn't under doesn't allow you to, to understand specifically how that money is coming in and specifically how it's being spent. But you're doing a good job, so keep it up. But if we can do better, let's do better. Thank you. Anything else on this item? And let's move on to the updated update on district unfunded or true liability. Next. That's next. Okay, um, there's a report in the packet. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but suffice it to say, this is the first year of CalPERS uh, quantitative easing. They've dropped their discount rate, which we anticipated was going to um, increase the amount of our unfunded liability. The chart demonstrates that um, during this last year, um, valuation of our unfunded liability has gone up almost a million dollars. We're now um, over $4.5 million in unfunded liability for our pension alone. This has nothing to do with OPEB. That's another huge unfunded liability in the future. Um, this is, a, as I mentioned, the first year of quantitative easing. easing. Um, there will be two more, and we're going to be getting down to 7% as opposed to 7.5%. That is going to continue to increase both the unfunded liability and also um, has shown that it's going to increase the normal cost that's taken out of everyone's paycheck, as well as the ARC, or annually required contribution, which are cash outlays that we must pay to try and keep even with this um, growing pension cost. Those funds will continue to um, compete for operation 
operational um, needs. And as of the last valuation, will almost come up to $800,000 in cash outlays a year just to um, fund the ongoing cash payments. So this is a serious issue. And if you're looking for places to save money, this would be the first place to look. <coughs> Any comment? I'll make a comment. Mm -hmm. This the general subject is still something I'm trying to get my arms around to understand. Mm -hmm. And the total dollars of unfunded liabilities are large, large enough when proposed this way to make me just sort of glaze over and say, well, we can't solve that one. Let's forget it. But I'm wondering if there isn't a way to break this down into manageable bites so that we might look at where, how we could fix a little here and a little there and maybe start to come to some resolution of this. Now, I, I mean, I guess this is for medical payments and retirement payments. This is for pensions. This one is pensions. Pensions are all, yeah. Okay, and all of our former employees are entitled to a pension based on certain schedules. And I assume they're different for different people based on time or whether they worked in fire or parts and rec or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, how many people are we talking about would be one interesting thing that I'd like to know. It's in the uh, chart. We've, uh, in, in the same, um, in the same period of rising unfunded liabilities, we've dropped two employees total district-wide. Um, we've gone from 10 firefighters in the uh, 3 of 50 plan down to 8 at this point in time. So that's under the FTE. Column. Okay, I see that. Time. That's the current people. What about all's that, all those that retired before them? Is there a... We're not paying for them. We're not, we're not paying, paying for them. For them? They are getting paid, but we're not paying. For yeah, them. you already paid for that. You paid for that previously. Okay, so all this whole thing is for <coughs> the liability accrued by our current employees, based on the arrangement we made when they were hired. Correct. Well, I don't know that I would completely agree with that comment. I think that there is a portion of our unfunded accrued liability. Well, that. Uh, not of OPEP, but of pension. So we're not making, uh, there is a portion of that, I think, and Jeff, please correct me if you think I'm wrong, that the pensions that we still have, uh, quote unquote, promised out well, there that have earned that we that aren't covered <coughs> full using their actuarial methods of lifespan and everything else and how much they'll make every year, I think that also factors into what our total unfunded accrued liability is. There are, yeah, there are residuals for the, um, for the people who have retired, let me point to um, safety tier two, three and 55. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, I think it was last year, we had an unfunded liability of $147. This year, with no employees at all, mm -hmm. you know, we now have one of 4,900. Now that doesn't seem like much, but what it indicates is the very simple fact that the return on investment that was is supposed to make up for 70% of the value of these pension payments in the future is not making it. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's a good way to illustrate. Okay. I don't want to take up any more of the meeting time, but I'm going to have to sit down with Eric and, and get smarter on this subject because I can't say I starting to understand it quite yet okay because i i don't know how to work on a solution i don't understand the problem well i think once um, you wrap your head around no understanding solution. and you find the solution herb then you will be the one person in the state most likely <laughs> yeah. you'll be a rich man <laughs> <laughs> all right anything else on this item <clears throat> Stephen? uh first of all uh, thank you uh both uh herb and jeff um with Jeff's knowledge and, and Herb's practical uh, approach to this. You sound like an engineer, uh, break it into pieces. I love it because that, I, I fully endorse that, that, um, that approach. 
Um, we can solve this. Now, I'll just forward you uh, something I, I got from Jody Morales the other day. She's CSPP, and it's an article about a tiny Sierra Village town that went bankrupt, and unfortunately, <coughs> the uh, they stopped paying CalPERS, and CalPERS uh, gave all the employees a 60% cut in their pensions, and that's what we want to avoid. And I think. We're not in such bad shape with our business, with our general overhead, that we can't make corrections, and we can't, maybe we can even win this thing, and it would be wonderful if we, we can. I think we should try to win this thing, and, and by the positive attitude uh, displayed by both of you guys, I think we can uh, get it done. So keep up the good work. Anything else? And we will move on to item number, or letter G, number three, potential creation of a five-year forecast of district revenue and expenses. Yeah, this was something that Isabella had asked be placed on the uh, agenda. I, it, it might very well be better to uh, the table this until you have a full board here that can really kind of discuss it unless somebody has given it some further thought. Uh, uh, you know, my thought on this is just to kind of clarify what exactly it is we want to try to accomplish and then what resources uh, uh, from a staff perspective would be needed to make that happen. Any objection to us continuing this till we have a full board? That makes a lot of sense. Not at all. I just think that honestly it's going to be at a fairly high level. It's not going to be I, at an extremely detailed level. I think it would have to be at a high level when you're looking at trend, you know, kind of trend analysis, taxing. You know, what, what are your primary incomes? What can you count on taxes? Looking at revenue streams from uh, this and then looking at expenditures and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes, I agree, high level for sure. Okay. Ron? Yeah, something that may tie into this, as, as you probably are all aware, LAFCO is going to be doing their North San Rafael study of uh, special districts a uh, year and a half late, but supposedly it's going to start this fall. And there may be information uh, and suggestions generated from LAFCO that would have to do with uh, how to set five-year predictions. So I'm just mentioning we ought to be uh, on the lookout uh, for when LAFCO starts and uh, their study and uh, be sure that LAFCO is asking the right questions and that we're giving the right answers to them so that uh, we can see what uh, what their expertise comes up with in recommendations. At our, at our July meeting, Ron, the board voted to recommend to LAFCO that they put the North San Rafael area study into this year's budget rather than pushing it off again. Right. I don't did they have their meeting? The meeting is August 10th, so it's okay. the day after tomorrow, and yeah. it's uh, on the agenda for that. I did talk to their uh, executive officer, Keen Simons, uh, and I looked at their packet, our letters in there. There's also a letter from the city of San Rafael in there um, supporting putting that in this fiscal year. Uh, he's anticipating a very long <coughs> meeting and says that he doesn't know that uh, attendance would necessarily sway it, but uh, obviously you're welcome to attend that meeting. It's, Thursday night at 7 p.m. is when it starts, and this is pretty far down the agenda. I have to sort my stock door out. <laughs> <laughs> I did put it out there to uh, Keen, and I asked him uh, if he thought that an impassioned plea to keep it in there uh, would be needed. And he said, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in this meeting, and if you don't make it, uh, I can't blame you. I can maybe online, or so you can catch it on the computer. Thanks, sir. Uh, okay, there, and there's also something in the fire department items that's going to relate to this. A couple of things on this five-year plan also. Um, there was a certain amount of energy and effort made by staff to start a capital reserves analysis, which is, you know, another heavy-hitting mm -hmm. um, item. Since that has started, mm -hmm. that's going to help us to come up with a better forecast and a better five-year plan. So. I think we have a reasonable um, start at this and look forward to talking about it next month. Okay, hearing oh, on. Just a historical note that uh, Joseph Stalin was the one who came up with the concept of a five-year plan. Really? How did that turn out? 
Let's move on to the district manager's report. <laughs> we'll use that as a segue. <laughs> I didn't know he was an accountant. Well, being a political <laughs> science major, it just stuck in my brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just a little bit of update on the on the storm related. Uh, not a heck of a lot to really kind of report on there. I have uh, brought out a second engineer who uh, I've worked with on other projects too. He has come out, he's seen the site, he's going to send me a proposal uh, for the geotech study. I've also gotten it from uh, Miller Pacific finally uh, after rattling their case. So I'm going to wait until I have uh, both of them in and I'll probably share them with Irv and we'll take a look and see. Uh, these are these initial studies are not high dollar threshold items. Um, I want to say probably, if I remember correctly, less than $10,000 for that, but it would all fall under the uh, the claim. I still have yet to hear back finally from FEMA, so I'm uh, just kind of waiting on getting what well, from our list of projects they've uh, said move forward with in terms of being able to expect reimbursement. Uh, I did list his name there. Um, so once I get that, I'll have a little bit more and be able to really move forward and I'll basically engage one of them to start the studies and, and do it so that way we can lay out a uh, engineer design specifically for this one behind us here is my most pressing one. Um, in terms of the park maintenance facility, again, not a lot of movement on that since the last uh, month. I have submitted with the county a uh, request for a planning consultation meeting as well as what they call a planning information packet, which will basically pull all permit uh, and building history on this parcel. Uh, that could actually come in handy for some of these other projects as well. As soon as they are finished doing that, they will reach out, they will set a date as to when we can have that meeting. Herb's agreed to attend it with me. Uh, I did meet with Ray Warber, who I see is here tonight. He's the chair of the Miller Creek Watershed Stewards. Um, I shared with Mr. Warber all of the draft site layouts, and we actually went down and visited the site firsthand. Um, he is here, so I don't want to speak for him, and I will. Uh, let him speak for himself if he so chooses uh, after if there's any board questions. As part of these meetings that you're um, hoping to have, when will there be an opportunity to define some milestones, like when things are going to happen? For which project? Either. Um, I had hoped to have more response from FEMA and Cal OES by this point in time, but we just haven't had it. They've had some shifting. The person who was our primary contact is no longer there. They've moved us to somebody else who recently reached out to me about two weeks ago, and I kind of brought him up to speed on where exactly we're at on it, and he said, okay, good. Uh, good to know. I didn't get a lot of stuff transitioned to me, so I will look for uh, that report and try to follow up with those right people. I think from that point in time, uh, we'd really be able to kind of move forward again. I think this is the more pressing priority one, followed a little bit by down there. Uh, as soon as I have this other study in hand and we can really then go to an engineering stage from there and then start to put it out to bid is when we would have a better shot of here's how long it'll take to do it. Based on history, are we even remotely confident we're gonna get something done before it starts raining like crazy again? No. <laughs> so are there temporary measures? Or, I mean, what, what, what can we do? Uh, I would defer to Irv on any level of a temporary measure on that. I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm not 100% unconfident, but I'm certainly not confident that we'll have that up and done by the end of this year. We started picking up that new tarp color today, actually. Good. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I can tell you from past experience when we had back-to-back -back, uh, declarations of uh, disaster two years in a row, uh, one of my repair projects became a disaster for the second year because they didn't get it done in time. Uh, the thing more important we worried about is when will the funding reimbursement deadline end uh, relative to where we are with doing the project. Uh, right now, everybody is totally overwhelmed with work and the price is reflected. And it's, you know, you know if, we, if we had design plans, we're ready to go out to bid now, and we aren't even close to that. There's a slim chance we might get something done this year, but it just isn't going to happen, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, we'll have to talk to the, once we select a geotech and get them on board, we may even want to ask them if they have some recommendations in their report for some 
stopgap measures if they feel they are necessary. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> then the next trick will be, can we get it past the various permitting agencies? I see. And there's going to be a lot of them. Because this one is actually in the creek. So you have to go through the whole charcoal process and everything else. Mm -hmm. Or declare it an emergency and just tell them here's what we're doing. This is an emergency and do it. Mm -hmm. But it would all be temporary. Right, right. And um, the people that have looked at it so far um, do or do not feel that we're in any imminent danger if we have another year like we had last year. Uh, well, I think that's a big if. None, none of the people I have brought out from a geotech side in looking at it, uh, including from a hydrology side, felt that it was in imminent danger and actually felt that fairly low below that uh, uh, ran into some serious bedrock just by looking at what's happening on immediately on the other side of the creek and everything else that you hit pretty stable ground not too deeply in there, which is why they're suggesting the boards. Uh, they do not seem to have the same sense of urgency that I fear with it, and my fear comes more from what happened on the other side mm -hmm. over there. But just looking in where this is at, it's definitely, I mean, it's a, it's a different geology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the temporary shed is the more well, that's, co that's coming out. That will be gone before the next rainy season. We're going to pull that out. Uh, it's no longer going to be used, and we'll remove the foundation and everything else, and then we will cover that the best that we can. To, but you know, the water still comes in from underneath. It's it's the damage happening to the site from the from the creek. Removing the foundation is a better thing than leaving it there. Cedar blocks. Just mm -hmm. There's no cinder blocks. Cinder yeah. blocks. Yeah. Oh, okay, there's no pad. No, this was a temporary shed. Okay. Cinder blocks around uh, with uh, uh, basically brick, 12 inch brick pouring. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. This was an in house special built, yeah. God knows when, but uh, it needs to come out. Okay. Shane will bring us color samples for the tarps next week. <laughs> 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 I agree. Uh, like that pool house is, uh, that pump house is critical. Mm -hmm. uh, Anything, Eric, anything else from you? No. Board members? Public? The floor. I said, wait, Lord, with the Lower Creek. British Head Stewards. <clears throat> I was here uh, at the last meeting, I believe, and made the comment that I had not been informed about the uh, maintenance shed activities. Since then, uh, Eric has taken me out there along with uh, Sarah. Phillips, and she's with the county, and she understands the situation much better than I do, so she helped tremendously in communicating the dangers involved. Uh, thank you for your time. I do appreciate that. You. Learned a lot. Uh, I observed uh, to Eric as we ended the, the tour that if I were his boss, I would uh, insist that they get rid of that shed as fast as possible. And uh, one of the comments made during the meeting last time is, uh, so, so many times you see within our projects that, that uh, we try to get something done and it takes so long, it takes so much energy and so much time and so many uh, approval processes that we don't get anything done and then there's the emergency and we spend twice as much money to get things fixed very quickly. I uh, hope that that doesn't happen here. You've made a lot of progress so far. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, there are four options that were, were suggested. Right there. Very put together, and uh, I really like number two. And according to uh, uh, Sarah, uh, every, every other organization is going with the, with the option number two also. So the first thing is you got to get rid of that that exposure you have right now, and then move into getting number two approved or sure when it's Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thanks, sir. Yeah. Yeah, uh, first I want to talk about the uh, pool shed and uh, the uh, temporary shed. What, what's in that temporary shed? Nothing. It's completely gone? Yeah. But, so you're not storing chemicals there or anything? Okay, so that's, that's a concern. Um, I know it sounds drastic, but does it make sense uh, to relocate that the pump house, uh, uh, you know, just to get rid of that, that issue. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know what's what's involved in a, in a pump shed. I know it's a nice looking building, but uh, in terms of plumbing, should that be an option that's uh, considered as opposed to you know a half a million dollars worth of shoring up a uh, uh, facility? Um, I think that's something that should be probably explored. Um, secondly, um, you know I. I'm disappointed I wasn't uh, along on that meeting um, uh, to for the maintenance shed. Um, I did look at the, are we looking at four options now? Four options. And the first uh, observation is the size that you have for the maintenance shed. It's uh, 40 by 40, 1,600 square feet, plus uh, a maintenance yard, plus about a thousand square feet for the, uh, uh, the the office. I'm not sure. Yeah, probably a thousand square feet, twenty five feet. Um, do you need that much? I I really don't think so. I, I mean, for three guys, it just seems unbelievably excessive, and I'm not sure why you would make planning for such a large facility. This is not. It, of course, it's a cost issue, but the bigger issue is uh, that takes away from our park use here. It takes away from the whole purpose of having a maintenance uh, team uh, is to have a park, a recreational park. So I really don't care for uh, that, and so I don't know if you want to respond to that, but, but I, I, like I said, I don't think there's too many uh, landscaping companies that would rent that amount of space for the work that's being done on our facility. I think they would, they would probably do it in a single car uh, storage facility and, and be done with it. Find that if they have extra equipment, they either rent it or uh, do something else with it. So, uh, out of the three options, uh, the third option, or the fourth option, next to the firehouse, it looked like it was hand drawn. I don't know why it isn't done with with better, you know, to the same quality standards as everything else. But it seems to me that that plan really is not fleshed out, and I don't even know why you guys object to it. But apparently you do. But uh, that is the only facility that fulfills the requirement of the stream conservation ordinance of 100, uh, 100 feet setback. Um, I want to point out, too, that the maintenance shed, uh, or the maintenance office, is probably illegal where it's standing. It's within six feet of the fence line, and that would be, I believe, a permanent facility, which meaning it needs a 12-foot setback. Um, so you've got all kinds of problems back there, and just to just because the maintenance shed's been there for as long as many of us remember, it doesn't mean it has to stay there. Maybe, maybe we can do things better, and um, I would encourage you to do that. Um, in addition to the Water's Edge Stewards, who are a good group, I, I'm happy that uh, Ray's here. Uh, you have other parties, other interests involved. And so before you put your blinders on and say, let's get it done, uh, there's a lot more process that needs to happen. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's about it. Uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are, what did I say, nine, nine agencies outside the county that uh, have uh, authority over uh, the creek here. So uh, just keep in mind it's, it's not going to be just calling up uh, a gal up at the, at, at the Civic Center and getting it done. It's going to maybe be a little bit more involved, especially if you plan to ignore the will of the people. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, just so you know, uh, those four options were siting studies. We have not yet even talked about the size of the facility. It was just to show 
some okay. locations with a kind of a placeholder for a building. Well, they, they uh, had so that. I, I, you yeah. finished, you had okay, your part. I'm sorry. So there, there's no real, uh, nothing's been studied yet as to the size. The park maintenance folks have come up with what they think they need. Okay. But at the point that we know that we're going to use one of those four sites or some fifth site, then a professional is going to be engaged to do a proper study to determine the uh, size, shape, architecture of the building. And it, it hasn't yet even been thought about. And that isn't an accident, it's on purpose, because we're trying to take it one logical step at a time. And I say that without even being uh, insulted by your uh, uh, characterization of my hand drafting technique. Oh, I am sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. I, I no, know that, but okay. no, it was just, those yeah. are the, there, in fact, there's there's two that I drew, drew up, mm -hmm. and there's the two that the, the, the landscape architect that knows how to do fancy architectural uh, drafting with a computer. Okay. But I just wanted to get the sites somewhat laid out enough that we could talk to people about Oh, okay. Them. Fair, enough. I, fair so enough. So I'm not insulted at all. Well, you're a little bit insulted. <laughs> and I didn't mean to do that. I, I, but, oh, sure. But, 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 but one of them, okay, and it must be the landscape ar architect, he had 40 by 40 on the size of the building. And right. Then, and then the, I don't know what he had for the size of the, the, the yard, that was big. And so that's a like massive facility. That's that's okay if you're you're still studying the site. I'm glad you clarified that. I wanted to do that. Okay. There was Linda. You had a question. Uh, I probably missed a meeting or missed some documentation somewhere. I only thought there were three options for siting the storage maintenance sheds. Um, so when Mr. Warber suggested or talked about number two option, I'm not sure what the number two option was. Let me try to explain it. The number one option is putting the building essentially where it is now, but a little farther away from the creek, with the road, the road continuing to run between the, the new building and the office building. Right. Option two flips that upside down and puts the road out on the creek side and path and the building closer to the office building. Okay. Uh, three was moving the facility down closer to Miller Creek Road. Thank you. And then four was the site by the firehouse. Thank you. All and four all of those are on the website too. Sorry. That's okay. Anything else on the manager's report? Well, I, can I just ask a, a Just quick, don't insult me again. No, I, I <laughs> won't insult you. But um, I really, since there is resistance to uh, next to the firehouse, I don't quite understand what that would be, and maybe I need to understand that. Uh, I mean, is it just the idea that you can't have a facility like that next to here, which I would agree with, or is it the idea that we can't possibly, uh, re you know, do something different with the storage facility than we have now, and there be problems? I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know where you're hearing there's resistance. Well, because because of uh, every discussion among the the CSD staff has been, oh, that's not going to work. Okay, so I don't know. I, I don't know if that's what why that would necessarily be. Because I I see space. I see the ability to put a, a, a good looking uh, building there, and I I don't see a problem at all. You can actually have somewhat of a the uh, uh, paid area there for for vehicles. So anyhow, All right. it, it seems obvious to me, but I, I'm really trying to understand you guys more. Than Thank you. Anything else on the manager's report? Let us move on to the fire department. <coughs> we have the draft minutes of the commission meeting. Any, there any questions on the minutes? Uh, there's a couple of things I'll touch on during the fire chief's report also. Thank you, Ray. I'm with you. 
I, I have a couple of questions if there aren't others, and maybe they're going to be answered later on. But I just wondered where you were with uh, getting bids, and is that information kind of in here? That's, that's the that's going to come up with the information that I, yeah, I caught over the weekend. So the other one, and I guess it relates, to, is item eight. I guess I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. That's your report, not the state, not the uh, minutes. No, that's that's the minutes. The, uh, that, yeah, item eight, where it talks about succession planning for the room and fire department. That's right, and that's where you. Yeah, you that's, that's, that's something that's got its own separate agenda item on page three. Okay, well, let's wait a minute for that. Then. Are there any questions then on the minutes of the meeting? You know, I'll just touch on it now. So we did discuss a little bit about possible hiring scenarios for the fire department because we're currently down one employee with Captain White's recent retirement. I did fill that position temporarily with the appointment of temporary firefighter David Purcell. Um, I talked to Captain Hine me yesterday, who is currently in the midst of his own workers' compensation issue and unanticipated Steve's going to be coming back. He did tell me that. Um, he's trying to get some resolve on his own personal issues this calendar year. Um, and also I talked with Jason Hatfield from Santa Fe Fire Department, their training officer, they're looking to have a new higher academy probably in October. So we're probably not looking to do any kind of hiring until October. Um, so the things that are reported in the chief's report in the minutes um, are just kind of in, on hold and I'm not looking for feedback from you guys at this point. Um, if you have questions on it, feel free to reach out to me. I, I think I know where the board stands on hiring and filling vacancies in the fire department. And as I move forward, I'll attempt to keep that at the foremost of my consideration. So we still have a temporary firefighter that has hours. Yes, available. he's currently about 390 hours. He run looks like he'll run out the first week in November. The way his so the timing schedule. is not bad. Timing's not bad. We're we're good today. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Don't let say. anybody get hurt. Is yeah, that's kind of the goal. Okay. Anything else? How about the fire activity summary and she's referred to that all combined together? Yeah, it's kind of all combined. I'll just uh, start rambling. June and July are pretty busy. June and it's a uh, wildland season. We did have a couple fires. I'm sure you guys are aware of the Dixie and the Shed Fire in Upper Lucas Valley. Um, those all went really well. Our engine company worked seamlessly with San Rafael. We had a grass fire over near Johnstone recently. Um, it's kind of been a problem area over the years. I think there have been four fires there in five years. It's suspicious in nature. Uh, investigation was inconclusive other than this is where it started we're not sure how uh, there were a couple of reports yes so we're following up on as far as people seen in the area but it turns out they were the actual bikers who stopped to call 911 and report the incident so uh, it's ongoing be vigilant if you see smoke you know take a look around and if you have anything to report see me uh, we've kind of covered the higher rings um, Strike team assignments have been going out. There's wildland fires all around the state. They are kind of dying down currently. It looks like most of the strike teams in the county are returning. We've had to turn down two requests recently just due to our staffing. Cesar Perea was out because he had just recently had twins. Uh, Sean Day got married today, so he was unavailable. Otis Smith was on some vacation. But our staffing is back up to the full staffing, so we are on the list for the next strike team assignment. Our employees are all aware, and they're aware that hey, they may have to come in to backfill and cover here. Uh, talk to Sarah Fowl about it, so we're, we're kind of, we're in that part of the season, but we're prepared for it and we're ready for it. Uh, kitchen remodel. I'll touch on that now. I talked with John Pope. John Pope is the guy who Herb turned me on to a few months back. John's a DIR registered contractor. He's done a number of projects in, the, in this county. Um, I like John. He's local. He's from Fairfax. He's got two kids in the fire service. He did provide us a bid initially, going through, going by the letter of the law as DIR as SBA 54 is written. His first bid was around $100,000. I re-met with John. We revisited the plans. Uh, we talked about SBA 54. He seemed to think that there's some gray area in SBA 54. I tend to agree, um, but again, he is a DIR registered contractor. If he does do this project, he will register the project. With, with the Department of Industrial Relations. The bid you have before you is uh, him working to come within budget of what the district has for that kitchen project. And I believe it's 60 or 65,000, Eric, is that correct? 
54. Well, this is 54, but we had talked the budget was 60. I think it's 60. I think it's 60. So this is what he gave back to me, but he also said there's room for this price to come back, come down. He put in the price of the cabinet makers that we had used through our architect. According to John, his cabinet maker, there's probably a five or six thousand dollar savings, as well as if we buy the appliances directly and give him the measurements, that there'll be some savings additionally there. Um, where do we go from here? In a perfect world, again, it's not on the agenda for approval by the board, but I think if the board gave Eric and the fire chief direction to work with John to come in under budget on the kitchen, that we could do that. Um, I'm open to suggestions. We've been going without a kitchen since March 1st. Uh, I've got four other bids that have come in. The cheapest one besides this was $86,000. The other two were over 100,000. The first person who uh, put the proposal in, uh, there were a construction branch of the, the company that did the mold, mold remediation. They were 24,000. I called them to see if they're interested in rebidding. They said, no, we're, we're maxed out. I called a number of other companies. People just are too busy to come in. John said he's available to get this done. Uh, suggestions? Direction? I have a question. Yes. Um, of these bids that you've received already, other than the initial one from the mold eradication folks, are these all qualified, two of, two registered? Of the, two of the four are. Two of the four. Two of the four. And the other two who weren't are substantially more than this. Understood. Okay. So what what's, you know, I guess the concern I have, and I listened to your um, explanation at the fire commission meeting the other night, is um, I don't know if this guy's a lawyer or a construction company or what, but I'm a little concerned about his opinion that, you know, don't worry about SB whatever. I don't think it was so much as don't worry about it because he does plan to register the project with mm -hmm. with DIR as mm -hmm. he's required to. Okay. Um, I tend to, he knows more about this than I do, than, mm -hmm. excuse me, he knows more about the process of SBA 54 than I do, mm -hmm. other than what I've heard from uh, the attorneys who've gotten back to us. There was a suggestion from the fire commission that before we move forward with this, we attempt, we attempt to get some sort of legal opinion back from county council. Whether or not that's something we want to do is up to you. I'm guessing, I'm not an attorney, I know how they tend to render their opinions. They definitely err on the side of caution. So my guess is they may give you feedback different than what the guy who does the construction does. Right, uh, yeah. I guess the concern is more, um, and I realize timing is an issue, and I'm not trying to be a obstructionist here but well, sure and again I don't want to get down to the other side of this and say oh we have this wonderful new kitchen and we also have a lawsuit right. so um, have we have we um, submitted an RFP I have not submitted an RFP to anyone I do have one that's available okay so all these responses are without the RFP correct other than um, the RFP has the RFP has some specific in it as far as what we want from the kitchen, but they're able to get those from the plans and the drawings that I show them. Mm -hmm. But the RFP, as far as I can tell, is a lot of legalese that talks about bonding, and timing, and things like that. Understood. I think as part of it, I think I would recommend that we do indeed seek legal counsel on this, and that we mention that we have solicited these bids without an RFP and get their opinion on that. Um, if they say, you know what, you're sort of I'm wading into dangerous waters here. We, we need to listen to that. Okay. Um, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, I hope they don't come back with that and you can move forward. But I, I think it's due diligence for us to check first. How about uh, with Eric's assistance, we'll reach out to legal for an opinion. Mm -hmm. If what we get back seems to be like we're on solid ground by going with John, um, could we get direction? to move forward to enter into a contract with John not to exceed X amount of dollars? Or would you like to wait until next month? No. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be the only person yeah. speaking. So, <laughs> I, I hate to have the fireman continue to be operating without a kitchen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's already back in five months. So you'll go another couple? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Stop.
stop talking. You're not helping. <laughs> uh, what what was I thought I read somewhere? What was, where is John trying to go to keep the costs down? Was he subcontracting? And the subcontractors don't have to be EIR registered. Gray area. Well, because yeah, I've heard the same thing when I was doing work for a contractor on a public agency job before I got registered. I could never find that anywhere in the law, though. So if if John hires a DIR registered uh, plumber to come in and they get paid prevailing wages to do X amount of plumbing, it's going to cost twenty-two thousand dollars for that plumbing. This is just these are not specifics. This is just an example. If he hires Andy Pino to come in and do some plumbing to get the dishwasher and the sink ready, it's going to cost three thousand dollars. So that's where you're talking about the savings. So, so we need to know that difference. We need to know if, we're, if, we, if he's on firm ground. Otherwise, the DIR uh, registered plumber will sue somebody because he well, got that's, cheated that's, out of the job. That's where your risk is. Yeah. Your well, that's, we need to right, get, so. I agree with Jeff. We need county council's opinion on that and also on whether we need to do be more formal with our proposals uh, than we have. I, currently done. I can tell you is I like I know where these RF people go out, you know, you can send it to the Ring Builders Association and stuff. But I mean I literally have gone through the list of Sonoma County building, Ring County building and called these people. Nobody wants to deal bid on a kitchen, it's not worth their time. Yeah, but it's but it's, there's a legal process yeah. and if we have yeah, to yeah. follow it or is this a still an emergency project and where where there's some exemptions? I don't know. The other thing is it seems logical that we get the appliances yes. and take that out from John because if nothing else, it eliminates his percentage of profit. So then there is a markup. He did tell me there was a yeah. markup for him, and he said that's what that's another area of savings for you is for yeah. you to purchase that. Well, yeah, there's, there's 15 percent in there. Exactly. The only thing you have to be careful of is does he get the appliances at 15 percent less than you would? Mm -hmm. But you have some numbers here to compare them to. Mm -hmm. It seems like no matter which way we go, that's the way to go. As long as you make it very clear as to what you're getting so that if when they show up, they don't fit in the cabinet, mm -hmm. it's not on us. What's your pleasure? Um, I just think from a practical standpoint, the longer that we worry about this and the longer we have to keep bringing it up, the more likely it's going to become an issue. I mean, I just think we need to move forward and if we find someone to do the work, we do the work and we're trusting the people that we hire and we're trusting their professional opinions and that's why you're hiring somebody so i don't i don't think it's necessary for you know the district to go to county council i don't object to it but i feel like it's just adding another cost and delay to it when on a practical level this you know it, it's become such an issue and i just think this is it's just more of a business decision i don't see it as such a liability factor I kind of think we're overthinking it. Right. That's what John told me. He's like, you guys are way overthinking this. Right. And I mean, I guess I just, I mean, I had a meeting today with, on a project that I'm working on with contractors and engineers and architects. And, you know, if there's an issue that comes up, you bring in professionals and you take their opinion. And they were talking about, you know, inspectors and, you know, who would pass what and whatever. And, like, I trust them because, I, and I hired them because I don't know. Right. And so I'm, I'm sort of looking at this going, I don't know. But if this guy does know, you know, that's why we're hiring him. So. You know, we're putting our trust and our faith in staff on this. Linda. Um, I, I was just wondering, what is the budget now? Because I thought originally the kitchen budget was 85, and then I heard it was 65, and now it's down to something else. What so we never really had established a budget this fiscal year. Initially, when we got that first bid back from North Bay Environmental, and they yeah. said 24,000. That's kind of where we had set the number, but then when they had backed out and looking at from other contractors and some feedback before this fiscal year was started, Eric and I had come up with the, the thought that we could probably do it for 60 or 65, which I was optimistic that we could, but then the next three bids I got were for 100,000 plus or 86,000. So I was a little concerned, which is why I like John. Um, he's like I said, he's local. He's got two kids in the fire service. I trust him. Um, that's why we met with him and said, "Hey, you know, like, can we make this work?" And he's worked with us and he's given me some other recommendations on how we can make it more affordable. So 
I think, uh, you know, I think he's our guy. From a timing perspective, I think it'll take a lot less time to get that opinion than it will to be fighting something down the road. That's my I'm point. comfortable. We'll, re we'll yeah. reach out to him and uh, we'll go from there. All right. It's 60000 Thank you. Yes. Uh, I will tell you that five months of using a slop sink for washing your dishes or walking over here, a you know, stove that doesn't quite work, it's, it's been pretty frustrating on all, all ends. So. Like I said, I, the chief has been doing a lot of work, and he's been working with Caesar pretty closely. And I, I appreciate the, the work that the chief and Caesar have put in because I know it's, it's been a frustrating process. So I just, it's yeah, five months is it's been, it's been pretty frustrating. Equally frustrating. Yeah, I was going to say basically the same thing. March first is when the kitchen went crap. These poor guys have not had a kitchen that they can use. I have no idea where they're washing their dishes. I have no idea, but I think it's very um, uh, unsanitary. Now, the mold's been cleaned up great, but you've got exposed pipes, you've got no water, you've got no dishwasher, you've got nothing in the kitchen except finally a stove back, and I guess you have a refrigerator? Mm -hmm. Refrigerator. But, this, like Leah said, it's going to be a bigger issue and a bigger issue. And I don't know why the firefighters haven't sued the district, you know, three months ago for giving them such horrible working conditions. So I think the sooner the better. You got to get rolling on it. I don't know why you never took my $25,000 offer to begin with. And I think it's just ridiculous to continue and continue and to leave these guys in the lurch like this. I would not want to work. If I was a firefighter, I'd be looking for another job. I think that's the other thing is I think we do have some risk exposure there from the conditions next door for the employees. We're all in the letter. Ron? Well, I just uh, would like to suggest once uh, you get the information you need and perhaps a full board together at a special meeting to approve uh, this project, not wait for a regularly scheduled meeting. If we can save a week or two or three weeks on this once the decision has been made and it is agendized to the public, the special meeting, one item on the agenda and proceed with uh, all due haste to uh, get the thing done. Eric, are we, because it isn't specifically on the agenda, precluded from taking some action on this this evening? Yes, I believe you are. You can give some direction, but I don't think you can take right. action. Well, well, I think you could give some direction. I think that we're at a threshold that you have a policy that clearly states the board needs to approve it. You can't approve it tonight because, again, to that point, it's not a listed agenda item. With that said, there's been a couple people who have requested getting a little bit of a follow-up from legal, but it seems like that's wavering a little bit, too. So right now, I'm just kind of looking for what is the direction that we you know, kind of really want to go. I know what the chief has presented and kind of shaped it down a little bit. And maybe if uh, uh, Mr. Pope would give a more formal thing, we could certainly call a special meeting. We could do it at any time everybody's available and bring them in for 15 minutes and say, <coughs> here's this formal proposal and he'll register it as a DIR. I mean, he's, he puts his name on the line by doing that um, in terms of the subs. <coughs> My opinion is, uh, on something like that, if he's hiring the subs, the subs need to be DIR registered as well and follow the prevailing wage. If we're hiring the subs and we're trying to piece, that's where, in my mind, I think they're trying to refer to areas of gray. We're bringing in our own plumber to do a job that's under the threshold needing to be DIR registered, great. If he's doing it, I think it pretty clearly states where that's at. With that said, I don't disagree with any of the commentary that's been made. It, it has to get done. Um, and unfortunately, it's uh, a slow-moving government process of trying to actually get something pushed through and approved. Or just put it out there. You tell your fire chief to handle it, and I'll take care of everything. <laughs> yeah. Eric says our policy that isn't all that old yet. Was it two months? 
Well, Doug says for anything at this size expenditure, the board needs to approve it. So we're twenty five thousand. So that's why I asked it. If, yeah, well, because it was on now, the, the other thing I would say is with that said, the chief has presented you with information that you didn't have when this was posted. I mean, this just came in when? On oh, Sunday, some point Sunday. The agenda was posted on Friday, so you can, and there are those lights, make an exception. He's provided copies to anybody in the room who's wanted it. Uh, and if the board were to make basically a vote amongst the board to take action on this, you could then turn it into an action item. So that would be two votes. I would suggest that we instruct the chief to get a contract, and then we spend upon that, then we set a special meeting within you know, a week of receipt of the contract to approve or you know, not the contract. But I think having a special meeting format, um, I, I mean, I like that idea, given that it's not on the agenda for tonight, and that if we can agree to make ourselves available as a board, um, you know, I see no reason why it should, couldn't fall into a special meeting and happen before our next regular special meeting. So then you can publish the entire contract in the packet as well. I, am, yeah, I agree with that, provided we check with County yeah. Council on those well, two, can, can two items. Mm -hmm. Whether the subs have to be DIR registered and whether we have to go out with a more formal uh, bid process, even though this, while it's taking so darn long, is really an emergency project. We've got to get this done. I, I can follow up tomorrow on both. Okay, that's all I got, unless you want to talk more about kitchen. Yeah, so uh, I s a couple questions. First of all, you got bare studs over there? Is that what we're, what's Partially. That? Partially. So is there any reason not to do the job, but just to put uh, drywall up there to for the safety issues? Is there any reason why you couldn't do that? Like We don't need to do that. Well, Assuming you did, then it would take the pressure off of the got to get it done tomorrow uh, no, the thing. And then the other thing is, is there, uh, are you moving uh, plumbing? Are you moving electricity? Or uh, besides this issue that was brought upon us? So do it in a special meeting that no one attends. I mean, it, it, the whole thing just is. Very unseemly, I think, and we can we can do better than that. And we should be. This is exactly the kind of thing that we can we should avoid, so we can get our finances in order. Jeff, um, I'd just like to say this is one of two basic safety and employee working condition projects that we need to push forward as soon as we possibly can. One more complicated than the other. But just, just as we're trying to push forward the park shed initiative for our park employees, we need to push this through for our firefighters so that they are not encumbered by continually not having a kitchen. I'm not trying to hold this up. I'm just trying to protect us from protect potentially a lawsuit. Understood. Um, which comes down, I'll be happy to come to a meeting tomorrow if you can make all these things happen. I would think that the, the direction we've given to We're staff good. is speeding it up, not slowing it down. So. I would have liked to have voted for it tonight if we had the ability, and we don't. Understood. We can't uh, do uh, it uh, tomorrow. I'm comfortable. I have enough. Eric, I have enough. 72 hours. <laughs> so that leads us to the last thing that was discussed yeah. at the fire commission Follow meeting. The rules. Um, I'm sorry, we're done? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just making a, 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 a kind of a comment. He wasn't done. No, 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 I'm, go ahead, you, you, use yeah. your gavel or. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, Chief. So, that brings us in, coincidentally, to the next topic. Um, you know, I, I kind of have some plans for myself um, moving forward. Uh, at some point, the fire department's going to have to continue to move forward without Tom Roach as the fire chief. Um, I've talked a little bit about Eric with that. Uh, I have an idea on when that might be for myself, but with that being said, it kind of leaves us as to what are we going to do when that happens. Um, I'm more than willing to put in as much time and energy to help the district figure that out. Um, I'm also not going anywhere tomorrow, so I'm not going to you know, leave the department or the district 
um, with a, a level of uncertainty and not having a good plan in place. Um, I think the commission talked a little bit about some sort of a committee being formed to look at a few different options that might be available. A lot of this work has been done previously. Leah was a part of the sustainability committee a few years ago that looked at some things. I think those things are still options that very, you know, ready options that the, the, the district could consider. Um, but I think there needs to be a little homework done prior to that. Uh, so I don't want to get ahead of what those options are. I'm just looking for probably the board to come up with a committee, maybe who serves on it, that committee could meet and figure out what their charter is and what they're going to study. Um, you know, I don't think we're looking to reinvent the wheel. I think a lot of this stuff has been done already in the county and elsewhere in the state. Um, you know, there was discussion of maybe hiring a consultant. I think that's a waste of money. I think you have professionals both within Marinwood CSD and in other departments that can that have experience in this and can help us along in the process. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. The, the Fire Commission did make a recommendation to the board that they form. I think they called it an ad hoc committee, which means we'd be subject to the Brown Act rules and regulations. Uh, put a committee together, include stakeholders, and figure out what it is we want to study moving forward, and then get to work on this. Yeah, sure. Um, I was at the uh, commission meeting, and um, I listened to the, to the discussion, and I believe that for a number of reasons, not just your departure, sure. for a number of reasons, um, it's a very, very timely thing to create a committee and start looking at um, all angles of the fire service and the delivery <coughs> of that fire service here in Marinwood um, from a financial and an operational standpoint. And um, I think a committee is warranted. I think we discussed at that meeting having a board member um, sit on it. There was either one or two fire commissioners that were interested in sitting on it. Um, the district manager yourself, you know, clearly would be involved. And I agree with you about consultants. Um, I think that, you know, there's been a recent merger. Um, I'm not saying that merger is going to be the, op you know, the optimal opportunity for Marinwood, okay? But I would say it certainly bears looking into mm -hmm. um, and making sure that while we, were, while we were thinking about delivery and we were thinking about staff, we were also thinking about the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, I would be absolutely in favor of creating this commission or this committee as soon as possible. I do believe because we should also involve um, a member of the employee group and also at least one member of the public. Mm -hmm. We probably will not be an ad hoc committee. We'll probably have, be subject to the Brown Act. Will not. Will oh, be well, subject yeah. to the Brown Act. That's and right. Will have to, you know. <coughs> hold the meetings in public. Um, but at any rate, um, I'm all in favor of moving forward. I guess the question is, do we have, um, do we ask for qualifications or, hey, I'd like to sign up for this and we evaluate? You want to hear from the fire chief on that one? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know, Jeff, you have a pretty strong background in the fire service and as a commissioner, you know, kind of what goes on there. So I would welcome your involvement. And I know Leah has been involved previously on the sustainability committee. I think she just frowned at me when I brought up her name. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, thinking back to the work that was done there, yeah, no. um, she was a part of it. There was some good information that was provided. And I think a lot of it's going to be the same. So I would welcome her involvement. And in, if I, you, you can come too, but that would be too many. So you're out. <laughs> That's just, I think, and I, and I appreciate he's, that. He's, 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 he's. <laughs> I think at this point in time, personally, and I kind of jotted this down, it, it, it's really four steps that it needs to go through right now, and that is one, just for the board to essentially establish a committee. I think the committee then needs to have a, uh, a goal or a mission defined. I think then mm -hmm. you need to decide on the composition of the committee to the chief's point. Is it one board, one commissioner, two board, two commissioners, how many members of the public, how many of this, and outside of the people that are appointed directly from the board president at that point or his designee, 
I think you need to define an appointment process. If you're going to bring people in from the public, are they going to apply? Are we going to put announcements out there? Are we going to say, please state your interest and qualifications as to why? I think you should have those things in place because I, I agree with what everybody said. In essence, you can call it an ad hoc committee. Just because you call something an ad hoc committee doesn't mean it's not subject to the Brown Act. This meeting, uh, these are absolutely going to be so public meetings that'll have to be noticed, that'll have to go out 72 hours in advance. Public will be allowed to attend, participate in the same manner that they participate in any other public meeting. Um, for me personally, that's just a little bit of where my head's at. I think, you know, everybody's in agreement, you need to form a group of some sort. I think it should be defined. I think it, the composition of that group should be defined and then how people that aren't directly appointed by the board president apply and then become appointed. We have a missing board president. Well, we could appoint him. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, I am happy to see this on here. I think it's, you know, the time has come, and I'm happy to help and serve in any capacity. Um, and I think that, you know, I agree with what Eric said about setting up the structure of it. I, that, you know, it seems like it would be the next step. And I don't know that we need, this is not an action item per se, is it? Discuss. No, no, it's discuss. a discussion item. You know, I mean, I also see that it'd be, if, if there's an action item or something, it'd be nice to have a full board present as well. Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, that PowerPoint you would put in from 2006, that mm -hmm. kinda, that's kind of along the lines that we want this committee to go, in my opinion, but mm -hmm. maybe if I were to refine that for next month's board meeting, we could come up with an actual appointment of who's gonna serve on this next month. Because as months go by, Mm -hmm. this, we don't want to kick this down the curb. Mm -hmm. this is, no. Let me tell you, in 2019, you're not going to be able to find me. You know, <laughs> the, let me ask the district manager this question. Um, could we start the committee with those people who are appointed and get going and then bring in people who are going to apply and then get approved at a later point, or do we have to wait for that? No, I think right now you basically kind of self-appointed or appointed between the body of the board that Leah and yourself will be on this committee. I think the two of you can work on the things that I just discussed, which are defining the goal, the mission, the composition, and the appointment process. Um, and I think you can be delegated with that authority to do that, at which point, once that's done, uh, we can certainly start putting announcements out there, having the public be made aware uh, and if they can even be turned around by the next board meeting, you can really start looking at the uh, appointment filling those slots. I think the two of you and the two of you alone are welcome to work on this. You are the committee at this moment in time. Greg Stilson from the Fire Commission, also from CSA 13, would like to be a part of this. A former member of the I think at the next meeting is Correct. when you will make recommendations uh, for appointments uh, of whatever. You'll come back and say, I think we should have two fire commissioners. I think we should have one uh, member from the uh, active employee group. We should have one member, uh, you know, the fire chief, the district manager, how many people in the public? Uh, do you specifically want somebody from CSA 13 or do you want to, uh, I just think all of those personally should be right. defined so that way you have a very transparent and equal opportunity. And because it's a public meeting, um, we can have guest experts. Of course. Attend. Absolutely. You know, so, and I'm just throwing it out there, like uh, Todd Cusimano, who's been involved in um, Larch Burn, Cormadera's, whatever we want to call it is that they're doing. He's been, he was involved in Twin Cities Police Department, becoming Central Marine Police Authority. Um, the city manager of Sausalito has been through this kind of a study when Sausalito and Southern Marine, when Sausalito was trying to figure out what they were going to do. So these are all resources we could draw right. in, you know, as we needed. Very good. Yes. Two comments. Yeah. Uh, one is, does any, do any of you know of someone who happens to live in the community that may be a, a I don't know, an assistant city manager in Richmond or something? I mean, just some connection that gives them the kind of background that would be helpful well, to us. Uh, the gentleman that uh, Chief Rose just mentioned, Todd Cousinwano, he's the former police chief of Central Marin Police Authority, and now he's the city manager of Corte Madera, or the town manager, I guess, of Corte Madera. Um, he's gone through this. He was a key in 
what eventually became Central Marine Police Authority, what it used to be Twin Cities Police Department, and he was heavily, uh, I don't know about involved, but I'm sure his knowledge was picked uh, as they were working through the Ross Valley Port uh, uh, <coughs> Madera merger there. I know him personally. I actually grew up with the gentleman. It would be an easy phone call. Does he live in the neighborhood? Yeah. He lives in uh, the North Bay, but he, okay. uh, I just, he works in the neighborhood. Okay, wondering. Uh, the other, you, you mentioned whether CSA 13 should or shouldn't have a, a representative on there. I think maybe you're, I was addressing a next fire commission meeting that you discuss that with the CSA 13 reps and see what their feeling is. They may have, and Greg Stelson volunteered to be the representative okay. from CSA 13, right. and he is also uh, a member of the volunteer force. So I, I actually Greg, wears two hats. Greg, Greg. Greg wasn't necessarily 100% bought into this. Um, we want Greg. I, we want Greg. You worked with Greg. Greg is a smart individual. He's got, again, he wears a lot of different hats, but I think that's something we want to be involved here. He thought that he was so close to it that he might be biased. I said, that's okay. He's smart enough to get by any bias he may have. Um, he, he's someone we want involved in this. Okay. He, seemed to, he seemed to want to. Well, Next item. Sign up. Yeah. From a bigger perspective, if in a couple of nights, LAFCO agrees to do the study of North Central mm -hmm. area. But there's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be an overlap or a duplication of duties or what? I can tell you that our committee is going to make more headway than LAFCO does over the next six months. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that it would be a duplication. Uh, I do think there would probably be some areas that are intertwined, and I think LAFCO will look at some things that your committee won't, and I think your com this committee will look at some things that LAFCO won't, but I think that they will uh, complement each other. To say the least. If Lap, if, if the chief thinks LAPCO is going to go kind of slow at it. Yeah. Maybe one thing I do, a year and a half one later. Thing I, one thing I will tell you, depending on what direction you decide to go with your fire department, LAPCO may or may not have to be involved. And that's a fairly new law. But they may have to be involved. In that well, they'll, ha they'll have to be, they'll be doing their own study, but if you decide to say merge your fire department with a neighboring fire department, there's a state law that requires LAPCO to be a part of that. Be included in that study and participate in it. Well, that's that's why I'm saying. That. So, if they're going to keep their normal procedure going slow, if we made a point of let's do this thing, get it done, and get that as input to LAFCO, mm -hmm. it may then fit together even better. Awesome, one hundred percent. And LAFCO, it's an interactive process. Their yeah. study is. So, uh, but again, I think. Getting back to the basics, I think right now you have uh, two people that have agreed to take this on with Director Naylor, Director Green. You let them get together, you let them lay out these kind of things that we talked about. You have the commission meet the next time and clearly, uh, you know, designate uh, three people to submit to the board as recommended to serve on this commission, uh, and you go from there. And then we can start putting the other stuff out there rather than already talking about what exactly this committee is going to do. So, would you then for next? board meeting put on the agenda that we will be establishing this committee? I think you've already, to a degree, <laughs> established the need for the committee. I think, uh, yes, you will formally approve the committee, and with that, you're going to have recommendations from Director Naylor and Director Green as to the composition of the committee, the goal and the mission of the committee, as well as the appointment process of the committee. Okay. I, just, I get I'm concerned now, it's bit like with the funding thing for the kitchen. Yeah, we don't have the right well, I think you're, you're moving in the right direction. Okay. You've already got two committed board members who have past experience doing this that are going to mm -hmm. move One it. fire commissioner. Yeah, that are going to move it towards that level. And by the next meeting, you have a full-blown committee. And then once that, you start your appointment process. And then you need to start noticing those meetings. And it'll become a regular uh, point where uh, Leah and Jeff can update the board at each meeting as that moves forward to or as as it develops or as information is worthy of presenting. And then possibly at the next fire commission meeting, another commissioner might, who is interested might say, I'm interested. So we, we did put that out there, that because Greg was the only one who volunteered at the commission meeting, that I said, hey, if anyone else is interested, let me know. And I ran into Dan Curran, who said, Curran, who said he was interested. And I ran into Tom Ellsbury, who said he was interested. So the commission could decide between those two. I think we only need one. <coughs> Anything else on this issue? Steven. Yeah, uh, seeing that you're basically talking about reorganization, I, I was unclear what, what the chief was talking about as far as 
what he was thinking about. It. Are we talking about just his role or reorganization of the department? I think you're asking the committee to figure that out. <coughs> Is that okay? So, so I, I think before you select the two people, I think perhaps the two board members who aren't here should also have an opportunity to participate and discuss whether or not they want to be on board with it. Um, That's why I asked that it be on next month's agenda. Oh, okay, so I wasn't clear about that. So, um, you know, I, as I look at this problem, I, I see a couple things. First of all, we have an excellent fire department that do good work. Um, two thirds of it, unfortunately, is outside of our district. It's in neighboring San Rafael, um, and we don't. So the the cost is borne by Marinwood. Yet we're delivering services elsewhere. So as far as the taxpayer is concerned, what would be ideal is if we pay our proportional share of the excellent service that they provide. I don't know how we get there. Um, but it seems to me, instead of uh, speaking specifically about the chief, we first should figure out uh, how we're going to move forward. I'd like to make note of the, uh, uh, the fires that were put out. I, according to pr uh, press reports, we had uh, San Rafael, Nevado, and even Larksburg came up uh, to fight the fires. That's great. That's uh, cooperative work. That also says that, you know, regionally we have good strength in our fire protection services. So it's, it seems so obvious to me that we can regionalize, emerge, and, or do something. But we have to fundamentally look at this, and this has got to be part of our financial reorganization as well, so we can um, meet the uh, the pension demands of our employees. Because uh, I don't think we're, we're going to be able to do it the way we have things structured now. Thank so. you. I, I just like to disagree that it's not a problem we're looking at. We're looking at opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll just leave it at that. What, I, I'm sorry, I, I used the wrong word. No, also, in that something that one thing that obviously this committee will study is financially how it will affect the district. So. Yeah, well, so so the other issues are, you know, Nevada's got uh, very highly paid staff. Uh, uh, I don't know what their pension situation up in Nevada is, but I know uh, San Rafael is in, in a world of hurt. So we don't want to marry our problems into their problems. So, you know, the back end of this has got to be figured out as well. It's very important. Thank you. Chief, I have one item, the very last item on your activity report. It says, in July, you toured the fire road damage with members of the Wayne County Fire Department. Who, who will be performing the repairs during? Oh, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I met with Timothy Best, who's a uh, consultant who is responsible for all the fire road repairs in this Marin County open space. And... Um, <coughs> We toured the fire road. He presented me a proposal on what his his cost to be involved to repair the damage to the Queenstone Fire Room. And it was not that much. I think it was about $4,000. He's on vacation. He's coming back the last week of August. All the work, all the uh, equipment and personnel who are going to do that work will be provided by Marin County Fire. So that's their contribution to the project, which is substantial, because we obviously, if we had to pay for that and rent that out, we, it would cost us a fortune. What County Fire is gonna do in the meantime, and I believe their resources are coming back sometime this week, is they're gonna put a quick scrape on it to make it passable this summer. And then hopefully before the heavy rains start, Tim and the bulldozer and the operator from County will come out and they'll spend about two weeks um, doing the repairs and it involves things beyond my scope of knowledge, but um, I've seen the work done elsewhere in the county, and it's it's good work, and it'll, it'll actually survive the kind of rains that we had last winter, and it, hopefully this fix will be something we don't have to address again for the next few years. How does this relate to our FEMA application? So it's included in the FEMA application, and what I put in for the cost of the fire road repair was $50,000, because if we had to 
you know, rent a, a D7 and an operator for two weeks. That might be the additional cost you're looking at. But since County Fire is going to contribute those to the repair, our cost is looking like it'll be about 4000 So ultimately, hopefully, we would be reimbursed those costs from FEMA if they ever kick down some money. Thank you. Thank you. Anything? Let's see. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on fire is the uh, date of the next fire commission meeting, which is September 12th, right? That's it. Let me get Jesus. I did? Yeah, I talked. I talked way too long. Sorry. Okay. Anything else on fire? No. Yes, sir. Uh, where the Moore Creek Bridge has tours. We have a outdoor classroom at Moore Creek. Uh, Dixie School, second grade, building B. And building A caught on fire. I was extremely concerned about what would happen to Miller Creek uh, uh, British Ed Stewart's project out there. And thanks to the incredible training and the knowledge and the firefighting talents of the fire department, the fire was put out in minutes. And it could have easily spread to building, building B and it would affect us dramatically. So I want to express my thanks and appreciation mm -hmm. for our yeah, that was uh, some moments of terror there that uh, went remarkably well with all the responding agencies. And there were three different ones for the, the three different engine companies that were first there. It was a Marinwood engine, and a Auto engine, and a Serafel engine, and it was like a dance. It went just like it was supposed to, so it was nice. And they ran into a locked gate. Well, they were yeah. locked out. And it was that. Yeah, that sheriff's office, again, they were the ones who got us in, so. Thank you. You're still carrying a master key? Yeah, exactly. He beat me to my sheriff's so deputy beat me to the one I had. Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Any, anyone have anything on the draft minutes of the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting? Mm -hmm. Can you, sorry, can you explain uh, uh, the memorial, uh, what was discussed on the memorial uh, policy? Was that yes, the, they're working on it. They're drafting it. Uh, I believe it'll be, the, it was in the packet. It'll be again in the packet for the final meeting and it'll most likely be presented to the board at next month's meeting for a discussion of potential approval. That was my question. Was what was it? I, I'm, I'm not. Can you explain it, or you don't recall what it was? I don't recall what the policy is. Yeah, the policy is a memorial and recognition policy. So basically, uh, things like placing memorial benches or things along those lines. It came up because it was asked to develop a policy from the board. The commission decided that they wanted to take it on in terms of drafting it. So the first draft has come out. They reviewed it, decided to... Uh, hey, I'm asking about the contents of it. I, I know... Okay, it's in the package. Discussed. So, in other words, I have to read it. Well, I would recommend you read it first and then ask me what questions you have based on actually reading the policy. I don't have the policy in front of me, Stephen. I can't recite it if I did. <coughs> well, if there was a specific question, you seem to know what it is. And I can read it, of course. <coughs> Has the policy actually been made or they were formulated? They had a draft that was in the last yeah. packet. Okay, and this is this occurred in the wake of the uh, request mm -hmm. for a memorial bench, I believe, for right. Johnny Bolding. Is that correct? Correct. Does that put it in a little bit more context? I know it was discussed. I just want to know what it was. What was discussed? What? What? Tell me about the policy. Tell me what it is. I mean, isn't that it's a pretty it's reasonable it's question to ask? Isn't it? Jeez. Okay. The suggestion is that you go to the. Parks I understand. Right. I can look read. at it. I, but okay. can But if if we have a few people that know what it is and don't apparently want to say anything about it, I don't well, understand. Nothing about apparently wanted to say. I'm I'm asking you, Stephen, to read the policy and then let me know what your specific questions are. I'm not going to just sit here and recite the policy. I don't know it a that well. B it was a first draft. It'll be back on the very next commission agenda, and then it'll be back on the board agenda. I don't think asking you to. Okay, I will read the policy before I will read it from, from the, for, for everyone, okay? Tune commented, 
Hey, he had referred hey, to Sam. Stephen, I'm sorry. Oh, you're out of order. No, I'm Wait. not out of order. You I said you're out of order. And I'm not in meeting. You're not answering the question okay. about what's going on in, in our government. That's all I want to know. Just well, answer the question. You, you said it's right there in front of you. You can read it just like we read it. Well, then if you read it, tell me what it says. Because I can't read and talk because I've got glasses and unfortunately I can't read with. <laughs> Linda? Um, I kind of do have a question similar to Stevens. When I read the packet last month, um, I kind of got the impression that the memorial and honoring procedure was only for the parks at Parks and Recs, like nothing to do with the fire department. And I'm only saying that there's a person who spent tons of money donating to the fire department, and I was just wondering if this has anything to do with the fire department or if it's only Park and Rec. And I couldn't understand that. It didn't specifically say anything about the fire department. It, barely said park and rec. I think it said contributions to the district. Linda, as I recall it, the discussion was that most of the time when people want recognitions, they end up in the park. And if they have, if the, if the draft doesn't include it, maybe it ought to have some mention of when there's recognitions put in either the community center or the Firehouse, or, or I guess the pool, any of our facilities. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, yeah. It sounded like just the fire department was totally left out. Do we have a uh, don't we have a memorial bench for Rock Haley? Yeah, there's a bench and there's a rock over there and there's a something at the flagpole at the community center. See how we how is the community center? Irene's at the pool. Mm -hmm. There's a rock at the entrance to Queenstone that apparently has an ex fire commissioner. Do we have a catalog in all those places? Or do you just he just <laughs> That's it. There's a bad jump out. When he goes, he goes. <laughs> they're, they're going to put the list in the broom closet because that's what I get. <laughs> okay, well, the Parks and Rec Commission is going to come back with a, another draft. Correct. And if they're happy with it, they'll forward it us to, up to us for our next meeting. For the next meeting, you're right. That, that's what I just made. Yeah, and it's supposedly a district wide policy. Correct. It happens, so it happens that the Park and Rec Commission has offered to draft it. Correct. Uh, yeah. That's all they're doing, and uh, and I have made it clear to them that I am sure that the uh, the board will have additional commentary or requests on it. So don't get too crazy with your words smithing or anything uh, at this point in time. I have a Park and Rec, a Park maintenance question for the chief. <coughs> the maintenance. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, mapping software that we have. Does it show infrastructure, i.e. pipes, wire? Can, um, you can get an MMWD. What we have, but no. But okay. through Marin Wrap, you can get MMWD piping, I believe. You can't get PG&E. Okay. Not the PG&E's on Marin Wrap. Okay. They're very... They say for security reasons, they won't let yeah. see the maps. Yeah, I was, I was just curious yeah. what level of detail is available on that. Okay, thank you. Anything else on Parks and Rec? Um, we looking, uh, Shane, thank you for now adding into your uh, maintenance activities what land design is doing. Oh, sure. Is this parks and rec, or just just parks you're talking about? Parks and rec. Okay, so I have a, have a question. Go right. ahead, Steve. So uh, I, I wanted to find out the results of the beer um, festival. What 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 happened? And how many people showed up? What was the revenue? Uh, we brought in just over four hundred dollars for the event, which was up from last year. Our attendance was up for, uh, we had 315 people, which was up from 280 the year prior. So you, you had 350 people. 315. And you made $400? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just out of comparison, different, different scale. Um, 
there was actually a, it was a, in the paper, someone brought in 40 grand for a, a beer uh, festival. I know my sister-in-law does one up in Chico, she brings in at least 50 grand. So, I'm kind of wondering, how come we're bringing in so little for such an event like that? We actually, compared to other like park and rec places where you're, you know, a few hundred people there, most of them lose money. Uh, us bringing money is actually... Don't we, don't we get free parent? Uh, yeah. We still have to pay for, we pay for bands, we pay for tent facilities. Um, we have to buy some additional like tap equipment. Um, so you're talking about net. Yeah. yeah, and we have, we have, we could bring in quite a bit more money if we want to turn into a regional event, which I don't think the community wants, nor is something that we want to put on in the middle of the summer. Um, you know, I'm sure the one year, oh, yeah. Law doesn't cheat, has thousands of people at it. Well, uh, but, but yes. I mean, we put these events on for the community, the community's friends, you know, five square miles basically from here. Right. We really try not to, we don't market it outside of Marineland. Oh, yes, Mr. Hansel does. Well, I mean, if he puts it on Facebook, you know, on social media. He puts it on next door, everywhere. Okay, well, I'm saying we don't like take out ads in newspapers mm -hmm. and put up banners around mm -hmm. town like, Lots of the festivals you see. So, what should, what were your expenses? Your expenses must have been pretty high then. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but I know we ran the numbers and brought in just over four hundred dollars. Your expenses? You said tent rent no. and stuff like that. Yeah, our total, our, our revenue after expenses was four hundred, just over four hundred dollars. I think I'm being clear. I, I, I profit, money and revenue expenses. So if you take all the so revenue, you're, 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 you're telling me the net, which I understand is four hundred dollars. He doesn't have the other information here in yeah. front of him. You, you didn't hear him say he didn't have the information. Is that acceptable? I mean, how? how listen, I mean, okay. let's bring in money to the district, okay? This is not relevant, Stephen. This is a community event for our community. Just like music in the park, the board has had a board level decision for many years. These are things and activities for our community. They are not intended to be revenue generating. So, so the, the financial performance of events are not relevant. Is that what you just these, said? Not for these community events. This has been a board mandate for probably and a decade. And you don't want to look at the expenses and you don't want to look at the revenues. So this you want the, the, the net. Decision, Is that not what by, you're saying? Not by okay, that's fine. I think yelling. there's something wrong. When we, when we do it that way, because for the board. Well, you're entitled to your opinion, but that is, you are not on the board. I think most people would have a similar opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Here. And I'm not saying that anything's being done wrong. I'm saying we don't understand what is being do done right. And Stephen, if we you're can the one approve who doesn't things, understand. Uh, we don't, what's that? You're the one who doesn't understand and is wasting our time. It is 9.40 PM. We have an agenda. It's, I'm through. wasting your time. Yes. Because I don't understand. Because you haven't read the agenda. You don't understand the meaning of, of being uh, responsible to the public. Okay. Go ahead, Leah. Anything else on Good. parks and recreation? I see the next meeting is October or August 22nd. Oh, I do have one comment. I just think um, when I was reading about the year-round youth recreation programs, you made a lot of profit this year. And I just think that's fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You, you and your team are doing a great job with all of the uh, year-around youth programs. Thank, thank you. you. All right, down to item J1 is a resolution for election of directors to the Special District Risk Management Authority Board of Directors. And we have a draft resolution and resumes of the seven candidates. And the resolution comes directly from SDRMA. It's their template. It's how they ask it to be submitted. We're not required to vote. I put this in here in case the board would like to. Two years ago, we put this in, and the, the board came up with a vote approved it and we moved it forward, it's uh, uh, entirely up to the board. Two years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, this was in every four years. No, this was two years. Yeah, I remember. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. Any comments from the board? Yeah, I feel completely out of the box. for people. 
always gotten these little write-ups, but I, I, it's just the only information. Uh, but I, I tried, and you know, these these are the people that provide our workers' comp and, and property right? liability and, property liability. and uh, our life insurance. And uh, so the the board members are to make sure that they can provide these. Um, services at least cost to the special districts in California. So S the, the, SDRMA is, a, is formed as a joint powers authority, mm -hmm. so they're required to have a, uh, right. have a board. Understood. Now, just out of curiosity, in your dealings with them, are you happy with what they're doing? With SDRMA? Mm -hmm. I am. They're attentive, I think. They are responsive for the most part. Uh, I, I think that uh, We've leaned on them pretty heavily, especially on the workers' comp side. I think they fight the battles that are worth fighting and do the research. And uh, when we got ditched by a much larger company uh, for our old uh, life insurance plans, and I started looking at things, they were the best setup uh, by far. Um, as well as if we move forward with the EAP at some point in time, I would recommend we do it with these people as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, one further comment, I was struck by candidate Karen's statement that he has passed a measure A, which I'm sure has nothing to do with our measure A, um, that is going to fully fund his fire department in perpetuity. 43 firefighters, I'd love to know how he did that. That would be very interesting. Um, given what you just said, I wouldn't be opposed to having the three incumbents be reelected, and um, I think it was a Bodet who was um, pretty articulate in what she said about wanting, wanting to serve. That would be my recommendation. Comments? I'll say ditto. Thanks for doing the work, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it sort of a different way, and I think I ended up with one different person in the group. I suggested, yes, the three incumbents, and then we have to do one more. And I thought the board member who has a fire protection district would be uh, more attuned to what we're doing as compared to a cemetery district. Like who apparently hasn't funded it to perpetuity. Right. I, I agree. I just think he's a little bit new to what he's doing. But, and the other one has more experience. But, you know, like I said, <laughs> we're on sort of thin ice here. So they like to make a motion. Make a motion. Okay, I'd like to say I'd like to make a motion that the board um, apply its votes for Bracey, Miranda, Schaefer, and Bodet for the SDRMA board. Second. I'm having trouble. Okay, give me the first two names again. Sure. Bracey, which would be at the Bracey? bottom. Jean oh, Bracey. Yeah. Jean I Bracey. Can't, I can't miss that. Okay. Miranda. Yeah. Okay. He has an interesting background, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, Schaefer mm -hmm. and Baudet. Okay, so we have not incumbent Baudet. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Anyone in the public? I just have a question. Does, does this uh, <laughs> does, does this include car insurance too? Car insurance? Yeah, well, yeah they well, HR vehicle, the HR vehicles, every one of them. So it's just like one agency. Property, have. liability, uh, and workers' comp. And so we just have one one fee, right, that we pay each one? I was right. trying to understand that earlier, and I didn't ask the question. Well, we don't pay them each month. It actually is, uh, we pay them in a lump sum at the beginning of the year based on estimates. Uh, although property liability is pretty much set. Uh, Workers' comp we base on estimates, but workers' comp is based on actual payroll. Right. Well, I, I'm particularly interested in the the auto uh, portion of it because I think we can reduce autos and uh, cut costs. But anyhow, that's a different area. That's a different discussion. Is that? But that's who you would negotiate with. Is that correct? This is who is our carrier for all of our vehicles. Correct. All in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 That carries. Any requests for future meeting agendas that we haven't already mentioned as the meeting progressed? Okay, nothing I do have something. Oh, go ahead. Um, and I've asked this twice before in the last year. 
social media policy. A year ago, four board members voted no to be involved in social media comments, um, like on Nextdoor, on the Nextdoor website, with rebuttals to the community for various issues that certain community members brought up. And four out of the five board members voted no, and Mr. Kai voted yes. The following month, Kai put the same exact thing on the agenda. There was absolutely no discussion with the five board members, and everybody voted yes. What I do recall is that Mr. Naylor, in one little comment, he did say that it could be something that could be addressed in the future. I think the future is now. I think we need something about social media. So some day, some month, some time in the future, I would like this readdressed. Eric, does the next meeting have a light agenda or a heavy agenda? Um, I don't know, but I would say we have a lot of policies that need working on, in my personal opinion, a social media policy for board members falls down the list a little ways. Uh, I'd rather see some of the larger ones kind of get done. Uh, social media for staff is addressed within uh, a handbook. Uh, maybe it someday will get adopted, uh, but I think what Linda's referring to specifically is uh, for board members. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, uh, I don't know at this moment in time. But I will say one thing that I, CSDA did, California Special District Alliance recently updated their library of sample policies. I've actually purchased a USB drive from them. I'm expecting it coming pretty soon and, and very well could be one of the ones in there. I don't know. Can I ask two questions? Mm -hmm. I thought that, is it in one of the handbooks that just hasn't been approved? Like, I thought we had a social media policy somewhere. You have a, it is stated within the bylaws. Okay. And so, the board if, bylaws. if I can ask a question, Linda, has there been some inappropriate or infraction by a board member on social media? Like, I, I know I don't. Well, it was Mr. Kai that wanted the authority to issue rebuttals. That's all. I guess I'm just asking real life time. I, I don't read next door. I don't participate. I think it's, it, I mean, I'm not interested. So I don't, like, I, I'm getting unless there's a specific incident where I think, you know, if, if you can bring that to the board, but, you know, I'd be interested in hearing about that. But is it is something that is old from a year ago? I'm just not sure how that's relevant today. I mean, I, and again, I, I'm saying I, I, I'm not on next door paying any attention, so I don't know what the current made-up drama is there, and that's why I don't look up. Right. Name. The only reason I'm asking again is because I have been asking over the last year. Right. Because he slipped it in and nobody discussed it. I don't think anybody in the board is concerned about it, and so I'm asking you about the, if there is a specific incident that has occurred, and I'm hearing no. So it just seems like that's a personal issue between you and Mr. Kai about, you know, your interpretation of something. But if we have it in the bylaws, I guess I'm just not sure why. Okay, well I guess maybe we all, we each need to look at the bylaws to be sure what it says. But no one, can, at least in, since I've been on the board, I haven't seen anything in social media from any board. Yes, that's because uh, Mr. Kai is gone. When we, um, when we had Brown Act training at the Civic Center um, a little over a year ago, I remember one of the county councils um, basically told us very clearly that, well, it's probably not illegal to do it, but you're on a slippery slope if you start doing that um, because other board members can see it. You might get into, you know, a Brown Act violation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I refrain from it. I do read it. Um, I do not comment on it, and um, I don't for that reason. I have a comment about this, and then I have my own uh, suggestion. Um, many uh, city councilors issue news releases, uh, our, our supervisors do. I think it's great uh, for you guys to communicate with the public. I mean, it seems to me that this gets very insulated and small, and part of that is because the outreach is very uh, it, it needs more work, and I, I would encourage you guys, even if it's a one-way conversation, I did this, I did that, I'm excited about this, I think it would, would, would uh, be welcomed by the community. It could be on our website. 
Um, and you can also probably send it out through Eric's mail list. Um, so that's that's all I have to say about that. I don't think that would be violating the Brown Act at all. So, um, so uh, the issue, if I may continue, because I have an issue for the future. So the uh, Strawberry, uh, another community services district, has a design review committee. It's strictly advisory, uh, but what they do is they provide a vision and they submit it to the county and the county uh, commissioners look at that, they consider it, um, most of the time they acknowledge it. And I think it would be great for Lucas Valley, we've got, uh, we're gonna be under the gun here for a lot of development. It'd be great if we had something uh, of an advisory nature um, of community members providing vision and um, uh, response to uh, what the, the planning department has planned for us. So I, I would, the sooner we can schedule this, the better. There's a lot of uh, housing proposals up in Sacramento, uh, including what they call buy right um, uh, legislation, which basically means that developers can do what they want. Uh, by going up to the planning desk and they don't even have to talk to us. So I think, but we don't really have a voice as a collective, as a community. So I think that would be great, uh, positive for our community. Stephen, I think you have some misunderstandings. First, Strawberry is a recreation district. I remember what you said, but you didn't, you said it was something else. Yeah, come, well, I, okay. It's a Strawberry Recreation District. Yeah. I do not believe it has any connection whatsoever to the Strawberry Design Review Board. That's a totally separate entity that has to do with the County Community Development Agency. There's one in Kentfield. Uh, I can't, off the top of my head, those are the two I'm thinking of. Okay. But it has nothing to do with the Rec District. Okay, so we're, we're a community service district that has a charter with three areas of duties and responsibilities. Fire protection, parks and recreation, street lights. But and you we recognize have, we're one community though, correct? And I, what no, I was no, referring we to. We have all these different segments of community. There, there's the Marinwood Association is supposed to be taking care of those sort of issues for the Marinwood residents. The, the there's CSA, no Marinwood Association. Well, when, when an issue comes up, watch, it'll form. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it always happens I, every I, time. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about that, but okay. it doesn't exist. Wh whatever. Uh, I just the, uh, we don't need more things to meet and discuss, especially if they aren't in our charter. Okay. Well, maybe using the authority of what we have here to call out to the community, and it won't be. Uh, I think uh, we need to shore up our house first before we go looking to. Okay, else once again, I'm hearing that you guys do not want to look after the future of the community. Great. No, we didn't say that. We said we're dealing with our charter. You and don't want to do things we, we're not for the future. Government. You do not want to coalesce a, a, uh, the, the community to, to work commonly. Thank right. you. Okay, do we okay. have any recognitions of our other board members? Items of interest. Well, I think it was brought up at the beginning of the meeting, and I certainly had it my house, but the uh, great day is passing, I think, is, is a big hit to the community. I, I didn't know Ray very well, and I have with him a few times. I've heard very few people ever say a bad thing about him. I certainly wish him, uh, his family, and, and his survivors well. Is there a motion that we adjourn in his memory? Have we adjourn in his memory? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The meeting is adjourned. Okay. Sean Day got married today. Firefighter next door. Yeah, see you. Congratulations.